what is it about uh, Crane that made you want to commit to this program? Obviously, I'm sure you were well recruited. You probably had your pick of the leader of which schools you wanted to go to. But what was it about this program and what Coach Mack has built that made you want to be a part of this family? Honestly, I, I, I wasn't recruited as, you know, I was recruited. I wasn't recruited too late. You know, I got recruited from schools like literally like the June and July of May, May, uh like the end of my junior year AU season, so um, so you know, Creighton was one of not I wouldn't say the first school, but they were one of the first schools to really all give offer me a scholarship. And um, you know, I actually remember watching them play Villanova in two in two thousand sixteen on TV. My dad was like, you know, like this is like this is before they even like taught. I, I didn't even know who Creighton really was. I, I didn't know where, where they were in. But they, the way they played was it was fast. It was they moved the ball like they made threes and they just really they, it looked fun out there. So I was like, man, like that that would fit my play style. But you know, I don't know if I could play at that. Like I mean, I knew I could play at the level, but it just wasn't I, it wasn't real for me at the moment. And then mm-hmm. a year later, like they offered me a scholarship, and I just I kind of <laughs> fell in love. I fell in love with it, and I t- I took an uh, unofficial and then an official and. You know, just what Coach Mack, you know, he's he, he didn't lie to me. He he didn't he wasn't one of the coaches where he's like, oh, you're you're gonna start, you're gonna come in and play right away. I I didn't want to hear that because I knew that's what I did. Like I I since my brother went through all this recruiting process, I knew, you know, I had a good gist. My I just had a good gist of what was true and what was not throughout the process, and I knew he was being honest. He just said you can come in work and. You know, through your work, you you earn what you deserve, and you know that's what's been my whole life is you get what you deserve. And, so I and that's what Matt told me. And I remember and I just on my visit I fell in love with I just fell in love, you know, with it. I didn't want to go to a big school. I wanted to go to a school that really, you know, supported the basketball t- team. And you know, that's what Omaha is. Omaha is. It's we're like the professional team out here. That's that's how much how much right. love we get out here. And um it was probably the best season I ever made, honestly. Yeah, I couldn't find a better fit. That 2016 team, uh, when you had that first impression of the Jason how fast they play, was that that just Dustin Patton, uh, yes. Kyrie Thomas, Marcus Foster, WAP? Was it that group of guys? Okay, good. Because yeah. I we just had Marcus Foster on the podcast last week, and I told him that that was really one of my favorite teams to watch, obviously, since I've been a fan after graduation. I try my best to stay up and watch you guys play, bro. That team was electrifying yeah. sometimes you just never know knew what was going to happen like on, on any exactly. given possession something crazy could happen <laughs> exactly you know, i was just i just i remember watching it and then it was it's cool to think about that though like in the past it's really interesting it's going to be even crazier once you graduate and you look back at the future teams trust me i'm, I'm over here on this side now and i just like <laughs> I can't believe how much I'm still in love with just sip, simply just watching and cheering the guys on. I'm yelling at a TV at four o'clock in the morning on the other side of the world. So yeah, awesome, it's, it's it's crazy. So you have a twin brother, Max. Obviously, we all know your older brother, Michael Carter Williams, uh, NBA player in his eighth year right now, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. How crazy and competitive were those pickup games or one-on-one games growing up? <laughs> I would yeah. imagine with those two guys, like there's a lot of bangers, a lot of trash talking. So how how was that environment? I mean, it was. I didn't really play much one on one. Michael, he was he was he's like seven eight years older than me, so it was like, he, he I would never beat him. You know, now it would be a lot a, a better time to play him. But um, <laughs> you know, obviously a lot of trash talking going on. It was sometimes you put my dad would play he because he plays and. Mm-hmm. Even my sister, my sister plays as well. So, you know, we'd always, be, you know, we have a court in the backyard as well. So we just, we literally grew up, you know, playing out there and, you know, it was real fun. You know, sometimes my friends would come over and then Michael's teammates and friends would come over and we play like pickup games and, you know, I'll never forget those times. You know, that's where I fell in love with basketball and, right. you know, have, and having a brother like that who can push me and say I'm, say I'm weak or say I'm a baby or I'm <laughs> trash growing up it made me stronger it made me like love the game more made me more competitive and that's probably where people see my competitiveness from is just from those moments of me (laughs) coming up yeah what kind of advice or you know tips that he gives you I'm talking about obviously Michael Carter Williams being an NBA player right now what kind of tips does he give you as he looks back on your game the things that he sees that you might need improvements on uh how close are you guys when it comes to him just kind of you know, feeding you some advice in the times when he feels that you need it. 
oh, he's the best when it comes to that. Like, I couldn't ask for, like, a better role model in terms of making sure I'm okay after a bad loss or or humbling me after a great win or a good game. And he's always there to, you know, feed me that good advice and feed me that good information that I need to hear, you know, every time I, every time I step off that floor. And, um, He's just, he's, he's always been there. He's, he's the, if I have a rough game and he knows I'm down and we lost, he'll call me and be like, bro, it's not the end of the world, dude. You can, it's, it's all about the next one, you know, I, and then he'll send me some clips of what, you know, what he saw and, you know, what he thinks I should do in this situation and then vice versa, you know, if I have a good game and we win, he's like, it's like, on to the next one, you know, I think, I thought you did some good things, but here's what you also need to work on. So it's like a never, it's like a never satisfied type of conversation and that's, you know, that's how I am. You know, I don't, I think that's how my parents are, how my siblings are as well. I just don't, we just, I don't like having that feeling of being comfortable and satisfied because then I feel like I'll get behind.